Good morning. Good to be with you today as we wrap up our study of Hosea. Today's lesson covers the last chapter of Hosea, the 14th chapter, but I would like to back up a little bit to a midway point in the 13th chapter. Uh, Israel could not have been in a worse position. As you'll recall from last week's lesson, uh, God's judgment, God's wrath was to be poured off uh, on Hosea. So if we look at the latter part of the 14th verse in the 13th chapter, I will have no compassion, even though he thrives among his brothers, an east wind from the Lord will come, blowing in from the desert. Now, as you'll recall, an east wind always uh, exhibits something bad that's going to happen. Uh, an east wind uh, has been associated with wars and with famine and, and the uh, locust plague. Here it has to do with the attack of the Assyrian army. His spring will fail and his well dry up, his storehouse will be plundered. Of all its treasures, the people of Samaria was, must bear their guilt because they have rebelled against their God. They will fall by the sword. Their little ones will be dashed to the ground. Their pregnant women ripped open. Now this brutality that we read about here in the last of the 13th chapter is fairly typical of the conduct of the Assyrian army. They, are, they were a very uh, brutal people and this was characteristic of them. So again, Israel could not have been in a worse position than we find them at the end of the 13th chapter. But then beginning in the 14th chapter, uh, in seemingly an impossible uh, set of circumstances, God reaches out again to the people of Israel. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. Your sins have been your downfall. This word return and the first word there could well mean uh, repent but it is yet again to, uh, to approach the people of Israel and calling them again to give up their evil ways and to repent. Return to your God. Your sins have been your downfall. And that's always the case. Our sins uh, cause us problems, just as they did when Hosea was writing these words. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, forgive all our sins and receive us graciously that we may offer the fruit of our lips. Now, this is interesting. Take words with you. But don't come empty handed. Come to the Lord with confessions of sin Come to the Lord with confessions and asking for repentance. This is probably the Israelite version of our uh, modern day prayer of repentance. But this, this would equate to the sinner's prayer. But he wants us to be humbled and he doesn't want just empty words, but he wants, as it says in that, in that verse, uh, that we may offer the fruit of our lips. We want to repay with praise. We want to be sincere in our repentance as Hosea is writing here to the people of Israel. And then in verse three, it says, Assyria cannot save us. We will not mount war horses. So uh, Assyria cannot protect Israel. Uh, they cannot save us for, with the problem that we have. Our armies, our words will not save us. Repentance 
will save us, Hosea is saying. We will never again say our gods to what our own hands have made, for in you the, father, the fatherless find compassion. What, what beautiful words in Hosea alluding to the, the compassion and the love of God and saying that your salvation, your future, your happiness, your joy rest in the Lord, not in the armies of Assyria, not in uh, repentance that is insincere, not in sacrifices, but humbly to serve your God. I will heal their waywardness and love them freely. Uh, this, uh, th this is a power that captures people. The people in Hosea's time, the people in our time, this is a power that only God can break. And he says, I will heal their waywardness and love them freely. We get the sense of restoration. For my anger has turned away from them. God, despite all of their waywardness, despite the, the seriousness of their sins, their callousness, their intentional disobedience, God has saying, my anger has turned away from them. In verse 5, I will be like the dew of Israel. He will blossom like a lily. Now to them in this very arid country, uh, dew was important as it was, of course, in the Garden of Eden, as it was in the history of Israel. And so we see here a use of that word to reflect God's blessing. I will be like the dew to Israel. He will blossom like a lily. And so he has switched now to botanical illustrations or botanical analogies. Like a cedar of leaven, he will send down his roots, his young shoots will grow. So sin apparently had reduced these trees of Lebanon who were, they were very high quality and sought after and used in the construction of temples. And apparently these trees had been uh, reduced to a stump. Uh, they were apparently dead, but, but God is saying to Israel, you will flourish again. He will send down his roots. His young shoots will grow. His splendor will be like an olive tree. His fragrance like a cedar of Lebanon. And you'll notice that Lebanon, the trees of Lebanon are mentioned three times just in this very short passage from five to seven. So the, the value of these Lebanon trees, the scent that they put out was importance and a, a, a sense of pride in Israel uh, for these trees of Lebanon. Men will dwell again in the shade. He will flourish like the grain. He will blossom like a vine and his fame will be like the wine from Lebanon. So here we see four promises that God has, has given to Israel. Uh, this is the only time that, that uh, we see this set of, of blessings. Israel will be blessed, but they won't be blessed by Baal. Baal has caused them this problem, the worship of Baal, the, the immorality that that brought, the prostitution has almost destroyed Israel. Uh, God's wrath was coming, but he has reached down to them. And he says, my anger has been turned away. Praise God that we are a people of second chances. 
the wine from Lebanon was uh, highly sought after. It was very valued uh, for its uh, superior quantities and qualities. And then in verse 8, O Ephraim, what more have I to do with idols? I will answer him and care for him. I am like a green pine tree. Your fruitfulness comes from me. So we can see then in this eighth verse of, of this 14th chapter, uh, kind of a summary, if you will, a, a, a summary of the book of Hosea, what God has written from beginning to end. O oh, Ephraim, what more have I to do with idols? I will answer him and care for him. I'm like a green pine tree. Your fruitfulness comes from me. And then he asks these rhetorical questions. Who is wise? He will realize these things. Who is discerning? He will understand them. So God is writing through Hosea. There's nothing more to do. There is no more to be said. We have come full circle. And so these rhetorical questions have an obvious answer, and that is through God, salvation comes. And then in the latter part of verse 9, he says three things, three basic truths. The ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them, but the rebellious stumble in them. So God is, is sharing these truths, but man has a choice. Man can either be obedient to the truths of Scripture and to the things of God, or man can choose not to be in obedience to God. We've seen in Hosea that the choice that the Israelites made to not follow God was to their detriment and to their downfall. But God being a God of second chance, here in the 14th chapter, he said, my anger has turned away from them. Praise God that he loves us so much that he forgives us no matter how many times we fall astray. Let us pray together. Uh, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for the words of Hosea and look forward to next week's study of Micah. Father, we pray that you would be with our church leaders. We pray that you would be with those that travel, uh, those that are ill, the fatherless, uh, the, the widows. Father, we pray your presence. We are thankful for your goodness. We pray for those that are in the hospital and pray that you would heal them. Uh, Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he came because you loved us so much and desired for our salvation. You, you wanted no one to fail and to fall and to be away from presence with you. So Father, as we are about our daily walk, our daily activities, we ask, Father, that you would be with us, that you would use us and guide us and love us, that these things that we learn might be applied in our daily lives. And all of these things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, and all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.